Okay, this is going to be a quick review on the Lyman T-Mag 2 turret press. Um, I know before I purchase this product, I like to read all the reviews and watch as many videos as possible to make my decision a little easier if I want to purchase the product. Didn't see too many on the uh, Lyman T-Mag 2, um, so I'm going to upload this and hopefully if you see it, it'll make your decision a little easier if you want to uh, purchase this. Turret press, like I mentioned already, it's got enough space for six dies and... I know when I was reloading, a majority of my time was spent on um, getting my dies all set up. It just seemed to be a vicious cycle and um, took some of the enjoyment out of it and as well as added a little frustration. So since I've been using this with all my dies in there and haven't messed with them at all, I'm getting really consistent loads and that's pretty much what it's all about. So six holes, six dies, and this is a detachable turret. You can get replacements and they're not very expensive at all. Just take out the center bolt and if you're doing different calibers and so you take out your center bolt and you can just put another turret on there and that one has my 9 mil and 45 ACP dies so it's two seconds to switch it out and then you just bang them out I mean it's it's really easy and it's really enjoyable now um, so it's got a handle on the side here used for turning the tur turning the turret it's got a hole on each side so you can just keep going around like that and it's got a nice little tray here that catches all the primers with my single stage press before I know my primers pretty much ended up all over the floor uh, so that catches everything keeps it nice and clean um, mounts with just three three eighths bolts one on each side and one in the back and it's got two holes here for the handle left-handed or right-handed which is pretty cool uh, I don't think a lot of them have that so um, the way I got mine set up is like the handle away from me it's out of the way it just works like that another feature that the Lyman T-Mag has which I like is this rod in the back and you just screw it up like that until it touches the turret and what that does is when you're seating your bullet if there's any flex in the turret at all this will take care of it um, you know, the harder you pull on the handle, the more it's going to flex, and the you know the easier you are, the less it's going to flex. So that'll have a variation on your overall lengths. Um, so with this on there, you just snug it up by hand, and then it doesn't matter how hard you pull on it; it's not going to move at all. Um, I haven't noticed very much flex in this, even without using it. it. Seems to be very rugged. It's got a nice thick base here and everything, and um, just those little features that I like Lyman does. You know, little extras that. Um, other components don't have so what I'll do is I'll just run through uh, one here real quick so you can just kind of see how it works and this is just once fired 357 sig still got the primer in it and everything and then I'm gonna use a Montana gold jacketed hollow point bullet I'm not gonna charge it or anything or prime it I'm just gonna run through so you can see the operation of the press so my first die is a 40 Smith & Wesson carbide sizing die, and I use that so I don't have to loop my cases. Because um, it's a bottleneck case, you're going to want to use lube if you're just using the 357 sig sizing die, which is this one here. You need to do this one second because you still need to size the case mouth and the neck and everything. This is just going to do the, you know, from the neck down or the shoulder down. So I'll run it through there, and that will size up my case mouth and the neck and everything. And then my third die would be the powder through expanding die. It's going to expand the mouth of the case a little bit to accept the bullet a little easier. And I mean, it's it's great. Once if you got all the same size cases, which you'd want to trim them, you know, doing this cartridge, um, expanding. Sometimes you're over expanding, under expanding, and if you over expand, it's going to take away. It's going to open the mouth up too much, and you're not going to get the right amount of neck tension. You know, when you seat your bullet and crimp it. So having this set up and always being the same, it's always consistent on the flare, the seating, the taper crimp. I mean, it's just made a huge difference not having to mess with the dies anymore. So what I would do is I would either hook up my powder measure right into this die and charge it through there or charge it regularly. So once it's charged, my next die would be I use an RCBS die here for my bullet seating. These other three alignment or lead dies. So I'll just set my bullet on there like so. Run it up into there. 
and then I got the proper overall length and everything. And my final step is I use a Redding taper crimp die. And that's just going to put a light crimp on the, the case mouth here. And same crimp every round. It's all about consistency. That's what you're after. So um, there you have it. It's that easy. You can do one round at a time, or you can do a batch of 50 or a batch of 100. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it just makes so much a world of difference not having to mess with dyes anymore. And it's actually become very enjoyable again. So there you have it, the Lyman T-Mag 2. Um, it's under 200 bucks. I think I got mine for 190 um, with shipping and everything, so right off of Amazon. So I, I don't think you can beat it. I mean, the only other one I was considering was the Redding. Um, seemed to be a little bit more of a beefy press. Um, but I really have no complaints about this press here, and I love it. So thanks for watching, and I hope this makes your decision a little easier, and happy reloading.